what I'm what I'm going to be talking about is more um, uh, dealing with uh, younger children who've got behavioural problems and preventing them getting worse. And um, it's not going to be about sort of more what psychiatrists do, and it won't be about medication. So most of our patients aren't seen by training as mental health. They don't take our kids. It's a long story. The force is a good organization, but it tends to deal primarily with kids who don't have developmental disabilities. Um, what else is there? Um, CYSN. CYSN is good depending on the social worker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It varies depending on some social workers are great and some mm -hmm. are hard to get hold of. So you can try and get hold of your CYSN social worker, and you may have a good one who may know what the resources are, or may not. All right, and then positive support, positive behavioral support. So you might get a referral to a behavioral therapist who does positive behavioral support through your social worker. My understanding is the CDC is really good at physio, speech, mm -hmm. yeah. OT. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much they do in terms of behavioral management. No, so. the Fraser Valley CDC, they have behavioral consultants. Oh. They have a supportive child development program. Okay. Um, it's great. It's quite thorough. So they're really good. Okay, good NIMO, too. Mm -hmm. They have in the NIMO at yeah. the CDC. Yeah. Behavioral. So they have behavioral consultants at the CDCs for kids who have yeah. um, behavioral problems? Yeah. In, in supportive child Sorry. development is mostly what it is. Yeah. Yeah. But that's through the Child development centers. Yes, yes. A lot of so them, yeah. some some places have comprehensive ENT, like Delta has one, Beach at Delta has one for Delta Surrey and Langley, <coughs> and then they develop some pro programs. But again, the wait lists are so long, but they've also developed. They do get funding for is like group sessions where families sign up for six weeks because right. they could be on the wait list so long that they might age out. Right. And what kind of group sessions would they get? The best person to talk to would be Pam Collins, who's actually in the other one, mm -hmm. who works at Reach. But okay. the, the families have to sign up, up to it. They work with the families, they work with the children, and okay. the families have homework to do about okay. implementing some of the strategies. Okay. So, so that's, that's, it's a good program, actually. Yeah. At the CDC in the Nile, they do parenting programs. They one do. On, okay. One on one yeah. with the families. They do yeah. one on one, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Same. Same. Same in uh, the in Nile. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what's the evidence base for parenting programs, uh, both individualized as well as group. But I think you need to kind of have some help in deciding well which program should be used, um, or which one is better than any other. So there are four, I think there are four main parenting programs for younger kids with behavioral problems. So the one is PCIT, which I actually knows something about called parent-child interaction therapy. PCIT is not designed, not developed for the uh, for children with disabilities, but it's a really uh, good program. It's developed for children, typical children, who have oppositional defiant disorder. That is, kids who you say, do, <coughs> clean up your room please, and they say no. And you say, I said clean up your room, and they say, make me. And the, the parent-child interaction therapy, the PCIT, is quite an interesting therapy. What they do is they watch the mother and the, usually the mother, and the child, these are young children, under seven, in a, in a room, and with some toys, and they say, go play with your kid. Now these are families where the, the relationship is broken down. And the kid looks at the parent. The parent says, I said play. <laughs> and the kid runs away because he's scared of his parent. He's, you know, unfortunately, he's often kids, there's some abuse going on as well because the parents get frustrated and the kids are challenging. And so anyway, there's no real relationship with the parents, with the child. So before you can teach the child to, to listen to their parent, you first have to build the relationship. And so they spend about 10 sessions <coughs> helping the mom, the parent, to play and have a good connection with their kid, have fun, be connected. And, and then the next 10 sessions, once that relationship's built, they teach 
the parent how to get the child to listen to their instructions. So, you know, it's got two components. The one is relationship building, the second one is, um, is discipline, which is um, positive based discipline as opposed to, you know, removing uh, stuff. And this, the other thing they teach is they teach the parents to ignore unacceptable behavior. I mean, there's obviously a safety issue at times that yeah. comes into it, but assuming that the child's not going to run into the street, you're talking about in the room, in a safe room, the, ch the parent is taught to ignore um, unacceptable behavior, which is uh, getting negative attention. So it's planned ignoring and attention for positive behavior. So that's kind of PCIT. And it's actually very well researched, evidence based treatment for children with opposition defiant disorder. I don't, I'm not aware of any studies on PCIT in children with disabilities, but there's no reason why it shouldn't work in children with autism or mild intellectual disability. The big problem, not problem, the big issue is it's quite expensive. I mean, because it's individual therapy. Mm -hmm. Quite a long, it's about 20 sessions, like weekly. Um, and and, you, and the therapist's got to be trained. <laughs> you know, it's not something anybody can do. So that's, but there's a PCIT institute in, in Vancouver. The second intervention is the <laughs> incredible years. It's probably the most widely used positive behavioral parenting program for, child, for younger children who have behavioral problems. And it's also based on the same principles of positive behavior, recognizing positive mm -hmm. behavior and avoiding punishment and developing a relationship. The third one that I'm going to tell you about is Triple P. Do you people know about oh, yeah, Triple P? Yeah, mm -hmm. CDC does that. CDC. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> so Triple P has actually, well I think the reason it's become, becoming popular, and I'm glad they're using it now, is that the triple P stands for Positive Parenting Program. Mm -hmm. And it's got a modification for families who have a child with a developmental disability mm -hmm. called Stepping Stones. Mm -hmm. It's for children approximately three years old to eight years old. And it has, um, you know, basically helps children who've got developmental disabilities and opposite defined disorder. <clears throat> They're all kind of ready for that kind of group of kids. Yeah. I'm just, I'm concerned. I know if a family called me wanting no. support, and I suggested that they take a parenting program, I don't think I'd be very well received. Mm -hmm. I think as parents, I know myself as a parent and child with often you feel blamed for your child's behavior um, and unsupported. Mm -hmm. I've taken parenting courses, I've read parenting books, my child's issues aren't parenting issues, and I mm. expect that most of the parents that we support have also done all that groundwork themselves. Mm. They could be wrong. And I think I've got two answers to that. The one is that we talked about younger children, and I see this as preventative, not just treatment. Yeah. The second is that I think every child with a disability should the family should be strongly encouraged to attend one of these programs. So as soon as you go to the CDC or get an autism diagnosis, you should be put into one of these programs. It should be automatic. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good use of our funding. So and also then destigmatizes it that everyone gets it. Mm -hmm. With an explanation that there's a much higher rate of oppositional defiant behavior in these children. It's, Part of the sense that it comes with the, with the territory. Yeah, I think what Dr. I mean, I, I, my sense is what you're saying is these are resources that are out there if parents are asking for them. Yeah. Like that's what that's what I'm getting is that we are resource yeah. parents. How can we be resourceful if we don't know what's out there? Yeah. Because I, I I mean I've been in a position where, you know, you're really upset about your child's aggression and your behavior and the behavior, and sometimes you're saying I just need help. Like I need help. So they might not be saying I need a parenting course. But they might be saying, I need help. And if we at least know the resources that are available yeah, right. at the point when they it's, request it, it's not that we're going to say, hey, I think you need this parenting course. But <laughs> at least we can know, if the parent says to me, where is there that I can get some help for some of these behaviors? Like, I, I need help with these behaviors. I need to know how to do them. And you can't even possibly deal with a behavior 
if you don't we'll deal with the parent child interaction and I don't care or even adult yeah. child uh, adult parent interaction like I don't care I can set my son off if I choose to mm -hmm. right I mean I can I can go that road and I can I can be all the things that aren't working for him right right, right. so I, I, I don't know I don't see it as a threat as long as it's presented in a way that exactly. is appropriate at the time that it's appropriate and I don't think that somebody calling up saying my child is out of control and you help you say well here's a positive parent for like, you know, I hope that we don't do that 